before you marry is a bad idea. Don't tell me there's no such thing as gun violence. That just depends on your definition of when life begins. There are problems of sin and habit that cannot be solved outside the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hello and welcome to this episode of Fate versus Culture right here on the CBN News Channel. My name is Dan Andros. I'm the managing editor of FaithWire.com. Joining me as always is author, Pastor Dale Partridge. Dale, what's going on? Good. I'm just adjusting my microphone over here because I realized I'm using one that's probably my wife's, uh, which means it's a little bit shorter. Um, things are good. Yeah, excited to uh, to break this down, um, not because it's a good thing to, to break down, but because it's something that's attacking the church uh, left and right. Um, I, I think people think that we're uh, we're, we're hemorrhaging Christians or something. Uh, people go, oh my gosh, like the church is just bleeding. People are denying their faith and pastors are leaving the faith and it's just a nightmare. Uh, the thing is this, um, we have to remember in this discussion today is that Jesus is building his church and his church, capital C church, that church isn't hemorrhaging Christians. Just don't get discouraged when you're seeing people denying the faith or leaving the faith, because I'll tell you what, there is still a solid capital C church that God is keeping those people and he's persevering those people. And we don't need to worry about, uh, about the church falling apart because it's not, God is keeping his church. Yeah. And for the uninitiated, Rhett and Link are very popular YouTubers. These guys have about 15 million subscribers on YouTube and, um, they're just very popular. And, uh, they um, were not explicit about their faith when they were doing their YouTube channel, but apparently they grew up uh, as Christians, uh, knew all of the all the slang, all the lingo, even worked in Christian ministries and were worship leaders and all of these uh, sorts of things as they were growing up uh, in in their in their early days. And both of them, interesting, and this is a very kind of a, I think a unique take here is they both deconstructed their faith and talk about how they over time abandoned their faith and left it. And so the, the story has gotten a lot of traction online. There's been a lot of reactions uh, to it uh, because these guys were supposedly solid Christians. And then over time they were, you know, moved out of the faith. So how did that happen? Um, so I don't want to like bash and pile on these guys at all. Um, but what it does seem like Dale is that these guys sort of grew up in what you would call a cultural uh, sort of Christianity. Um, you know, living in Dallas for a while, this was a big thing they talked about down there that it's almost as dangerous as being, you know, antithetical to, uh, to the, to the Christian faith, like being an unbeliever in the fact that, um, you, it's just what you do, you know, it's just what everybody does. So you go ahead and, and go along with it. Um, so cultural Christianity, a real thing here, uh, never having that real tangible understanding about your position as the created being and, and, and God being the creator, um, never really fully grasping that. So, um, Apparently that's the case with these guys. So why don't we start off there, Dale? What do you uh, what do you make of that? I mean, the Bible talks about people that basically believe in Jesus but haven't made him Lord. Okay, even the demons believe and tremble. The Bible talks about people who are professing Jesus with their lips but their hearts are far from them. Uh, the Bible talks about people that are um, dealing with uh, issues like um, they're serving in the church, they're engaged, they're actually even doing miracles and wonders and prophesying in, in the church. Um, but Jesus says, those people are going to say, Lord, Lord, and I'm going to say, um, away from me, I do not know you, you who practice lawlessness. So it's not as cut and dry in terms of we think, oh, if someone believes uh, and someone professes, that necessarily equals that these people are born again Christians. We know that there's uh, counterfeits. We know that that's a reality. I think it's uh, John, uh, chapter First John, chapter two, nineteen. It says, "They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might be plain that they all are not of us." And this is talking in reference to this idea of basically. Um, those who Christ saves are saved in terms of this. Uh, this is the preservation of the saints or the perseverance of the saints. 
Um, I think about John chapter three. I actually just did a podcast on this. Of it's titled "Am I a Born Again Christian?" or "How Can I Know I'm a Born Again Christian?" The 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 act of rebirth. Um, we have confused this idea uh, for moralism, meaning that um, we've confused moralism for regeneration. We've confused religious zealots for uh, born again Christians, um, and there is a absolute difference. If you have a moralistic framework that you were raised up in an ethically Christian house, um, yes, it's easy for you to deconstruct the leaving of your faith because you never had the faith. But if you're a born again Christian, you can't be unborn or, you know, the, the idea is that you have been, you have been awakened in, in this sovereign work on God's heart that you've been awakened to this reality. And, um, it's kind of like you, you, we're born on track a, and track A is what is of the flesh is of the flesh, and it reaps the rewards of the flesh. You, you can't inherit the kingdom of God and or see the kingdom of God, is what it says in John chapter 3, unless you jump tracks to the other track, which is the, 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 the road that leads to heaven. And through the sacrifice of Christ, or the grace of Christ, or the blood of Christ. But you need to be reborn. And the idea of being born again is a sovereign work of God. It's not something that we can manufacture. It, it's, it, it, it is something that that um, uh, is evidential of those who believe and those who have faith, but without a rebirth experience, you're just in cultural Christianity. You're in little C church. Um, and and you're, you, this is what I think is likely happening with these uh, gentlemen. I, anybody that does this and leaves the faith this way, I just go, oh, well, they, don't under, they weren't reborn. Um, and, and that's the bigger discussion. It's obviously my perspective and my opinion. Um, it's not necessarily, uh, I'm not going to carte blanche say that this is the case, but this is my perspective on, on the matter. Because Philippians 1.6 says, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. So either Philippians is wrong, and Paul is wrong here, and the scriptures are wrong, uh, that some people he doesn't bring it to completion. Or these people didn't have the good work started in them, that they were just a part of cultural Christianity, and it never turned into true born-again Christianity. Yeah, and I want to take a look, Dale, at um, a quote here that was written by a guy who uh, did some ministry work with uh, Rhett and Link back in their early days when they were at Crew, um, and so they knew each other, but eventually their relationship sort of just petered out over time, as, as often happens with relationships when we move on with life. He says, I'm reminded here of Link's story from high school when he got drunk. Uh, the night previous, and upon Link's confession to Rhett, Rhett stopped his car and said, get out. His reaction was dripping with cultural Christian legalism because my first thought was Jesus wouldn't have demanded that he get out of the car because of his failure, shaming him in the process. This isn't the Christ I see in the Bible at all. He says all the guilt Link felt over his younger years seemed to be as a result of what he thought about cultural Christianity, not the biblical Christ. Sure, both of them know all the Christian slang terms and cliches, but I really didn't hear anything that made me think about their relationship with the living God through Jesus Christ. It seemed much more like a relationship with Southern cultural Christianity that looks down its nose at sinners and spreads on the guilt rather thickly if you fall out of line. Dale, that seems to sound a lot uh, like what we were just talking about there. Yeah, I mean, again, we have to look at the promises of Scripture. John 10, 28 says, I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. And so I go, can you promise someone eternal life if they can lose eternal life? You know, um, and so again, what we're dealing with, I think that that quote that you read is probably accurate, is that you're dealing with moralism, um, confusing moralism for regeneration. And sadly, there's many people in the church that are dead in the pews. They're dead in the pews. They're, they're, they're a religious, moral church that has not been born again. They actually haven't been converted. That's why there's no joy. It's just rule following. Um, and, and that's where you get kind of statements like that. And actually, in the next segment, I'll share my story, which is absolutely aligning with that perspective. So we'll tackle that and more when we come back on the other side of the break. This is Faith versus Culture here on the CBN News Channel. Back in a second. Welcome back to Faith vs. Culture right here on the CBN News Channel. 
Uh, don't forget, you can contact us at any time. You can send us any comments you want. You can praise us. We're always happy to read your uh, emails telling us what a great job we're doing. Uh, you can send hate mail too if you want. I mean, I'm, uh, I think that's a waste of energy personally. Uh, but go ahead and do that at contact at faithwire.com. We read all the feedback. Uh, we can't always respond to it all, but we do uh, like to see it and hear what y'all are thinking and saying. So um, we would appreciate that. Contact at faithwire.com. So we're talking about Rhett and Link, the popular YouTubers uh, who recently kind of abandoned the faith um, and some of the red flags uh, in their testimony. So we're we're leaving it off there. Dale, where do you want to pick it up? Yeah, so basically the perception that I'm having is that, you know, people who abandoned the faith weren't actually saved in the first place. So that's my perspective. Um, and it's because, you know, when, when you hear verses like John 10, 28, it says, I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. I go, well, can you really promise anybody eternal life if it's really up to them to stay in in uh, in the faith uh, versus God being the one who keeps us? In the faith, which again is the promises of Scripture uh, in Philippians. I'm sure of this: that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jude. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. Um, you know the uh, Romans 11:29. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. So there's there's so many scriptures that support this idea. I think what's happening, as I said in the previous segment, is that we're confusing moralism for regeneration. And what we're when, when there's a deconstruction, what we're witnessing is basically the leaving of their moral convictions, and and the shifting of that. We're not seeing someone leave Christ or being unborn after they've been reborn. And so the issue is about conversion here: is that were they born again? We know that while you can preach the gospel and you can pray intercessorily for, for people, you can't actually manufacture a reborn experience in someone. Um, if we could, every parent would re, would would manufacture that rebirth experience inside of their child. Um, but but you can't do that. It is a sovereign work of God, the reburn, re, rebirth conversion process um, of, of Christianity. Uh, Jesus talks about it in John chapter 3, this idea. Um, he says, do not marvel um, that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but you uh, cannot tell where it go, where it comes or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. The analogy that he's using there, first, it's, it's birth. Second is that the, it's like wind. And anybody who wants to try to control wind looks like an idiot trying to control wind. You can't. And, and the idea is that the same thing is true, is that the Spirit of God is doing this rebirth experience in people that you don't get to control. You get to be faithful with preaching the gospel, and that's it. All that to say, this is my story. I came in and was part of the religious... Uh, I, Christianity is a great way to live. I mean, just without, even without a relationship with God, the, the moral, philosophical framework of Christianity is the truth. So therefore, it's a great way to live. And this is why so many families uh, go, hey, you know what? I'm not really a Christian, but I'm going to put my kids in a Christian school because, you know, it's a good way to grow up, you know? It's easy to exercise or to understand because people go, I, I yeah, m moral Christianity is good. It's good for the family. So this is what a lot of people do. And they actually get stuck in this. I was actually a part of this track is that I was, I, I, shared for many, many years a false testimony uh, that I was saved at 20. Um, when in reality, if you look at my life and examine it to scripture of what does a reborn Christian in, in the scriptures look like in comparison to my life, I was still in bondage to sin. I was, um, I was still not discerning spiritual truths. I was still living for myself. I, 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 was, um, I, I was still not uh, submitting to the authority of scripture in my life. Um, I was still not bearing fruit. There's all these signs that you go, oh, this is the sign of a born-again Christian. And I, looking back, I, I never had those. And I didn't notice this until recently um, when someone was, I was surveying my own testimony and they said, oh, this is when you were born again, huh? What, like seven years ago. Um, and I'm, I was dumbfounded. Wait, what? I was only converted seven years ago? And I went back and I did this evaluation. I go, oh my goodness, from 20 to 28, I was this guy. I was the guy that's dead in the pew. I was professing with my lips when my heart was far from him. I was, Jesus was, I believe Jesus was, was God, but he wasn't Lord in my life. I was all those people confusing uh, uh, moralism, religious moralism for regeneration, rebirth, and, and, and understanding Christ. And there was a time about seven years ago that I actually heard the real biblical gospel. 
and I was sorrowful over my sin. The fear of the Lord fell upon me. I was set free from the bondage of sin. Our marriage got better. Our children got better. There was a regeneration in my spirit. The fruit started flowing. The scriptures were illuminated. Everything started growing. And, and so this is something that you go, yes, many people in the church, uh, it sounds like these two gentlemen, um, sadly, have experienced um, cultural religious Christianity, but they have not actually met the living God. Because when you meet the living God, Jesus Christ, you don't leave uh, because he's given you eternal life. And you, and you would never leave and you can't leave. Um, and and so th- this is the perspective and we need to do some self-examination. The scriptures even tell us, examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Um, this is important process to do. And so we should uh, be praying that these men get an encounter with Jesus Christ, uh, that they actually come to a rebirth and a, and a real knowing uh, of Jesus and so they can replace the counterfeit that they were raised with. Yeah, and I think one thing that was evident, uh, Dale, when, you're, when we're watching these guys talk about uh, their faith journeys, it's interesting because there's a lot of snickering when they're sort of recounting like definitions of the gospel and what it means to be saved and th- what it means to need, be needed to be saved. And, and they talk about, oh, I know Jesus died. Or like they kind of roll their eyes and they snicker at it. And these are not sentiments you would take lightly if you were considering um, the, the creator of the universe who holds our souls uh, in the palm of his hands. I mean, that's just not, that's not anyone who interacts with God in the Bible. That is certainly not uh, the way they come away uh, from interacting with God. Usually it's, somebody realizing, woe is me, and um, falling down to their knees. Um, So I want to tackle that, plus another red flag, uh, which was an interesting, I thought, argument, uh, a a brief comment from Rhett when he was discussing what Ravi Ravi Zacharias had had said, and also the basis of morality. I thought that was pretty telling. We'll cover all that and more on the other side of the break. This is Faith versus Culture on the CBN News Channel. All right, we are back here on Faith vs. Culture on the CBN News Channel. Talking about Rhett and Link, the popular YouTubers who uh, sort of renounced their faith and went on these big, long deconstruction explana- explanations as to why uh, they are no longer uh, Christians. We're going through all the scripture on it, breaking it down. Dale's been doing that in the last couple of uh, segments. Uh, but I wanted to bring up one talking point here, which I thought was interesting. Um, it was It's sort of a way that they've, they sort of deflect um, any of the basic Christian arguments and the defenses that they have against these atheist arguments, which, you know, Rhett seemed to be bringing up as, wow, these were like new and amazing things. And, um, you know, uh, they were like impenetrable. Whereas then you just brush off, ah, I've read all the Ravi Zacharias stuff. And it, it, to me, that came across as a little bit disingenuous because, uh, because of course there are difficult things to deal with and grasp in any worldview that you embrace, even the Christian worldview. How can there be a good and loving God if evil and bad things happen in the world and there's sadness and sickness and illness? You know, if God's all sovereign, how come these things happen? Well, those are difficult things to, to grapple with. But I think when you look at the totality of all the different worldviews, I think we can be confident and, and glad as Christians to know that we have a worldview that stands up to so many of these scrutinies, that it explains all of these things far better than any of these other uh, uh, worldviews would, would care to explain. So I bring all that up to say, Dale, I think we can be confident as Christians uh, knowing that our worldview stands up to the test. Yeah, and I think about this, Dan, is that, you know, basically you're talking about an apologetics element. I I think that, you know, in addition to that, we need to be preaching the biblical gospel. Um, You know, a couple things I think about is one is, you know, what you win them with is what you win them to. Um, So if you're winning them with religious life, uh, you won them to that. Uh, but when you preach the biblical gospel, I believe that the biblical gospel is the only thing that can turn somebody from fallen to saved. Um, and, and we need to be preaching that. that, that it's, it's not a friendly thing to the flesh. It's not at all. And that's why so many pastors stay away from it. They just do the Jesus loves you and he has a wonderful plan for your life. Come up forward. And, and that's not the biblical gospel. And so, um, uh, yeah, one thing I, I want to leave us with is that we need to be preaching the biblical gospel because it is the it, it has the power to save. It's it's foolishness to those who are perish to, to those who are perishing, but it's the power of God to those who are being saved. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We need to remember that. Second thing is that on their argument, I go well. Popularity almost never equals superiority. So remember that is that just because something's popular doesn't mean it's superior. Uh, that's a bad argument. The last thing I want to say is that 
um, you know, they were covenantally a part of the church, meaning that they were maybe baptized into the church. So they had some sort of covenant relationship with the church and they might be leaving that covenant, but they're confusing that with leaving the faith. They were actually not necessarily a part of the faith because when you're born, you're not, when you're reborn, you're not going to be unborn. And so those are the key things that I want you to take away and, and do an examination of yourself. Look at the scriptures and determine if you are a born again Christian or if you're religious zealot or if you're if you're missing if you're confusing moralism for regeneration all right and to your point here dale um where we talk about these churches that aren't really preaching the word and it's just god's just this great big grandpa up in the sky handing out candy and, and all of that sort of thing i want to recommend uh something that a friend of ours and someone who's contributed to faithwire.com uh, several times uh, erica anderson who wrote on uh, one of the major outlets i think it was uh, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, something like that. And she wrote about, thank God churches are dying. And so what she was getting at is not that, oh gosh, there's this big collapse of Christianity, but it's the church of the capital C is actually growing. And that these churches that aren't uh, teaching anything substantive and they're trying to just be ear ticklers and people pleasers, uh, those churches are dying. Great. Because we're going to separate the, you know, separate out the bad stuff here from the good and separate the sheep from the goats. Um, you know, the people who are actually truly wanting to follow and not trying to just take in a nice message for the day. So um, so thank God and praise God for those churches that are being bold and sticking to the word. And uh, we're going to see them grow. So um, recommend that reading and checking that out. And hopefully it'll be edifying to you. Well, Dale, thanks for your time today. Thank you for watching. And we're going to wrap this thing up on the other side of the break. This is Faith versus Culture. All right, that's all the time we have for today on this episode of Faith vs. Culture. Thanks for watching the CBN News Channel. Thanks for watching uh, this program. And uh, be sure to follow all of our channels on YouTube, um, on Facebook, and all the other social media channels. And, um, you know, you're not going to get news from a Christian perspective in very many places. Uh, you're, even, even conservative news outlets are, are really not putting God at the forefront. And, of course, we see the, same, the world the same way that you do. Uh, so, hey, support us in that endeavor. Read the articles consume the content and um and uh we can promise that it'll be edifying to you uh so thank you for watching god bless and we'll see you next time